we go. So now we're going to do the Victory Vortex. Um, I was thinking about this one. He kind of wanted it to be like like a little tornado, and I totally agree. That's what it should be. My issue is I'm worried it's going to be too light. Because like when you think of a tornado, you think of something that's sort of like... Um, tornadoes aren't like super dark. They're, they're powdery, sort of. Am I making any sense? So... First, let's draw. Draw a tornado, and I'm gonna do kind of like... This sort of a look like individual pieces. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to have it kind of a white, brown, and blue, and then I'll just put a really dark outline on it. So that's our Victory Vortex. And then uh, we're going to have to put the V's on here. Let's do a different color, so purple. Not too I was thinking of something like this, maybe, and then like, I don't know. I don't know, I think that looks okay. It looks like the Tasmanian Devil a little bit. Let's kind of warp these so they look a little more like they're flying away or like there's, they're more um, action-y. Yeah, I like that. <sighs> oh, I'm feeling very tearful right now. <laughs> oh, gosh, I hope this isn't like a TMI thing, but... Um, so you guys know I have problems with my hip, and I'm actually going in for an MRI on Wednesday to hopefully get to the bottom of all this. Um, took a long time, had to do a lot of physical therapy and stuff before they were finally, quote unquote, satisfied, I guess, that I truly did have something wrong, and I wasn't just like, um, what's the word? I don't think they thought I was making it up, but I think they thought, well, it might be something we can just fix by moving your leg around a whole bunch. <laughs> um... Whoa, 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 what the hell, kid? Hello, issue. Anyway, so in the meantime, they've got me on these painkillers. I've mentioned this before. They're called tra it's called uh, tramadol, and I take it very um, sparingly, even though it's non-addictive. I'm just I'm one of those people that I'm always scared. I'm like, this is it. I'm gonna end up addicted, you know. So. Um, I kind of want to do like a little Sailor V 
Pikachu tail on the end here. If you look at the V on the Sailor V logo, if any of you are familiar with Sailor Moon, it kind of has like a lightning bolt sort of a thing going on. That'd be cool. But anyway, as I was saying, um, they gave me this Tramadol stuff, and the one kind of weird side effect that I have from it, besides it helping with the pain, obviously, is it makes me really, like, uh, euphoric, almost. Like, I'm just like, I love you guys. Like, it makes me kind of feel loopy and and super happy and, and everything. But with that, I get really teary-eyed. Like, it's almost such a pleasant feeling that it just, it brings me to tears. But anyway, I had to take it this morning because um, I was hurting. But like I said, I take it pretty sparingly. I take it once a day, if that. Like, sometimes I just sort of grin and bear it. Because, again, I, I don't know. I'm weird about painkillers and things like that. Oh my god, I thought I heard a bunch of birds going, like, absolutely insane out there. But it's like a, uh, it's like a mower or something that the gardeners are using. I thought it was like a bird losing its mind. I, I just heard all this shrieking. Um. Oh, but as far as drugs are concerned, like, I am not one of those people who'd be like, oh, don't take drugs. You know, like, I... I recommend not letting it consume you, but if that's your thing, have at it, Haas. Oops. Oh, I want to kind of go down there and delete that stuff. Okay. Look at that. This is turning out really good. I'm pretty chuffed with these. These Vs. I'm like, it's really weird. I've had hip problems since I was a teenager on my left side, but I was a stupid child and I just never, I don't know, I, I didn't bring it up a lot because I had bigger fish to fry at the time. I wasn't sure if I was depressed or anxious. I was going through like a lot of mental health things and I was a freaky child. <laughs> I apologize for that, but I was trying to find my way in the world back then. <laughs> with mental illness issues and uh, so I just like never you know like my hip hurt but it was kind of like the least of my problems you know and uh, as an adult once I got all like my issues sorted out I was like hey you know what my hip hurts and it makes it hard to jog it makes it hard to do you know just go on walks to be honest I like to walk my dog I like to just go on walks on my own and uh and I'm, I'm young, and I shouldn't have to deal with it. <laughs> Putting my foot down and saying that I shouldn't have to have these issues, you know? And um, so I've finally taken it upon myself to try to get this all straightened out. But it's weird to think that I could have surgery and then not have hip problems ever again. I guess I'll do that. Well, not, maybe not ever again, but I mean, to be pain-free for like a decent amount of time, like maybe into my 50s, but you know, I, my worry is that if this has gone on for so long, is that, uh, that the hip has become arthritic, and, um, that would be very bad news bears. But I don't think it has quite yet. Anyway, I'm sorry to like bore you with my hip thing. So all I'm doing here is I'm just uh, going to remove the little lightning bolt tail from this V. And... I'm 
ahead and just make that a little steeper. I might make this one just a little bit bigger since I've got some space to work with here. Hey, um, I, while I'm just, you know, babbling on drawing V's, I thought I would recommend a really cool documentary. If you guys are, like, into nature or uh, survivalist stuff, I'm super into survivalist stuff. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't plan to go out and try to live in the woods anytime soon. Just fascinating to me, I guess. Hatchet was one of my all-time favorite book series, the Hatchet series. But anyway, it's um, a two-part PBS documentary called Alone in the Woods about um, Dick Pranecki. I think that was his name and he lived for 30 years up in the Alaskan wilderness uh, he built like his own log cabin and and he he used an 18 millimeter camera to film it all and he uh, they I'm trying to think uh, this man I think he got permission from the family to uh, use the footage and audio recordings and, and uh, journals to make this like really nice documentary about this man's life up there and it's just a super pleasant upbeat documentary series and it just makes you fall in love with nature and you know our balance with things and it's just it's very nice and it, I could almost I almost hesitate to say it's spiritual if you would look at it like that you could probably definitely see it as like a spiritual thing but um oh, this is not a good crescent right here there. you know what maybe I'll do that me go back. I'm trying to push the tops of these or the edges of these crescents like way over to the edge. I'm trying to use as much of the space as I can. But anyway, I thought I'd recommend that documentary. Um, I just started watching it with Dave. So there's a part one and a part two, and they just announced that they found enough material from him to make a part three. He's passed, he's long since passed away now. Um, but, so he's not making any new material, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. But uh, just absolutely wonderful documentaries. I'm really super, super enjoying them. Also, if, I'm sure people are going to recommend it to me. But uh, Les Stroud, the Survivor Man, uh, he's another like amazing survivalist, very like down to earth. He he has a documentary show about his exploits. Um, and also the the Alone in the Woods documentary. The way it's done really harkens to the way Les Stroud does his stuff, where he just goes out there alone with a camera and you know films himself and everything. Like it has has that uh, that quality to it. I'm really hassling over these curves, probably for no good reason. Gosh darn it, I want it to look beautiful and lovely. I really like um, doing work for Zisto. Hell, I like all the gaming guys that I've done work for. I, I can't say there, there's a bad one in the bunch. <laughs> I wouldn't do work for them if I didn't like them. I think Zisto was... That was such a fluke, um, you know, the way I, I found him. You know, I found him through, obviously, one of the ultra hardcores, and uh, I remember, um, I can't remember what season it was, but I think it was the first or second season he was in, and he was putting paintings everywhere, so, like, when the the other uh, Minecraft guys would 
be sneaking around and going into everybody's bases and stuff. They, they'd be like, oh, Zisto is here. And there'd be paintings. And I was like, what is with this guy in the painting? So I went to watch his perspective on his channel. And he was just like putting paintings everywhere for no reason. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I, I saw that he, uh, I think at the time he was um, doing a lot of the super hostile maps by Vex and I, I watched them all in like a couple weeks or something and I just got super addicted to his play style. I just, I really like how he's very like, let's get down to business, let's defeat the Huns, you know, he just, he always has like a plan for everything, you know, there's never a dull moment, he edits really well, you know, I just like the way his videos are constructed in general. Oh my gosh, and I love his Skyrim series. Like, I. And then when I found out he was going to keep doing it with mods, I was just like, yes. Victory Vortex. But it's a, a real privilege to to do this for him. Okay. Oh, for a minute there, I was like, oh, I still have to draw the V's. <laughs> no, you don't, Emmy. No, you do not. Wanted. Uh, let's change this to a different color. Let's do uh, here. Do like a dark brown. Let's hit it with a little overlay. I really like doing icon sets. <laughs> I, uh, when I did all those farm animals, I don't know if I recorded any of that for this channel, but I did a, a bunch of, like, animals and buildings and, like, little farm game stuff, and it, I really enjoyed doing that. Um... I don't know if I like it with the white. It looks like I used the bevel emboss tool. I, yeah, let's not do that. Um, and let's change this to like a more yellow color. Okay. And we'll collapse that all together. Add a little sketch. 
and there's either an earthquake right now or a train going by. <laughs> I can never tell anymore. What do you think of that, huh? I think that looks real nice. No, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> wow. Uh, you. Sorry. Ugh, having a moment there. Let's just get rid of a little bit of the stuff poking out. Oh wait, that's the uh, scale tool. Nope, it's not what we want. So we'll put a nice bold outline on that so we can see it really well when it's super, super small. Thank you, Twitch. <laughs> and same thing here. We're going to put a nice outline on this, but we're going to make it like more of like a dark blue because we do want it to sit back a little more than the... than the text in front of it. Yeah, something like that. And uh, just for my own gruesome curiosity, thanks for not laughing yet, I'm going to put a white uh, a white back on it. a hole somewhere. There it is. Hate when I do that. I don't know about this. I thought it might help it help make it look more cohesive, but I think it just I think it just makes it look noisy. Yeah, I think that looks okay. As always, let's try to utilize all this space. little victory vortex image for him. This like side right here is so warped and it's really bugging me. Hmm. 
There, I think that looks a lot better. Okay, yeah, now because it's like, like it's really smooth now. Um, I don't want to go up that far, but it's being a real pill. Okay, whatever. I think that'll, <laughs> think that'll work. I think I'm going to uh, gradient this border. So my light color is going to be this light blue. And my dark color is going to be this dark blue. And I'm going to, why does that look like that? All right, there we go. I think that looks nice. So we're going to go image size. Let's go to 28 right away and just see what it looks like. I think it looks nice. It's a little hard to see the vortex, but um, I don't really know how much that can be helped. Yeah, I'm kind of like sitting here thinking, like, can I do anything else? I guess I can just make the outline. But try that. Speed it down just a little. Yeah, that helps. I mean, it's just it's gonna be small. <laughs> I should have probably been doing the um, the smallest ones first, so that if I needed to make any changes, it would be reflected in all of them, and I wouldn't have to redo them. Okay. And that is complete. So we'll go over here. So this one I totally don't understand the reference. I think it just has something to do with Twitch, but he wants me to draw a train. <laughs> um, I laugh at your train. So I guess that's what we're going to do now. Now let's not go blue, let's go like pink. There we go. So let's turn that off. New layer. Time to draw a train. I really hope I understand what he meant by train. It just said train for when people subscribe to the channel. But I don't really get the train reference. I, I feel very out of the loop right now. Everybody go away. Go away. Go away. Alrighty, so... Draw the front of the train. Let's put a Z on the front for Zisto. Wait, is that how you do a Z? Yeah, like that. Oh my gosh. Shows how little I use Zs. <laughs> what do we 
big old cow pusher out front. Uh, let's see. Can't say I've ever drawn a train before. <laughs> I apologize to any uh, train folks out there. Gosh, people love trains. I mean, I can understand why. They're pretty cool, but it's like, geez, people like trains. I'm so worried somebody's going to be like, this is a terrible train. Oh, you know what I should ask him? I should totally ask him if he would like something for the Kerbal Space Program, like a little Kerbal head. I don't know if he plays that on stream, but... These wheels need to be a lot fatter. Yeah, wow. I feel so weird doing this, but I'm like, I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god, I hope this is right, I hope this is right. <laughs> so there's our little train. And now we're going to ink it. So let's get some black. And let's turn on the zoom, the zooming. You're probably getting so used to this. <laughs> Close here. I'm sitting here looking at all these train parts. I'm like, I wonder what all these do. Other than complicate my life. Huh. Maybe I should put the big lantern out front. as opposed to the big Z, but the Z is like so much better. I'd put a big Z stove face on it if it wasn't for the fact that it's going to be teeny tiny and probably like really hard to, uh, to see. By the way, if you wonder how I get s really straight lines, I, uh, I made a pack of Satan. No, I use shift to do really straight lines that go this way or this way. If they go any other direction, then that's a lot of lazy Nazumi helping me out, being a bro to me. <laughs> Why 
round train front PLZ. I'm just, uh, just having a thought. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I will never have a thought again. I'm just thinking if maybe it's better to put a cross. Or like a plus sign. Not a cross. Not like Christ on the cross. Um, on the front of the train as like a, like a plus subscriber sort of thing rather than a V. <laughs> he gave me kind of a lot of artistic freedom with this project. So, uh. the little bell. And the little chimney stack. I hope he likes my train. <laughs> I also hope he understands that I'm working with very limited room, so I can't fit the whole freaking thing on here. Like, the whole train. You know, the dining car, the sleeping cars. I swear to God, if I send this to him and he's like, where's the caboose? I'm gonna be like, oh. <laughs> I don't think he would, though. Where's caboose? I need caboose. For train completion. You know, if I had money and space and time, I think model trains would be really fun. Like, to make all the little things and stuff. Of course, my aspiration to that would be uh, Gomez from the Adams family, him and his train collection that he would always smash. Look at my cute train, my cute train. I'm pretty chuffed with my little teeny tiny train here. Go cow pusher. Um, yeah, I should uh, really ask him what the whole story behind this is. Like, what's with the train? Is it like everybody get on board the Visto train? Is that. Is that a thing? <laughs>
Oh god, I hope this isn't like something I've missed, like a reference or like maybe a s I'm trying to think of series of his that I don't watch though. There's a reason I'm, uh... <laughs> I haven't done the wheels yet. There we go. Here's the coal car. All right, so now we're gonna do the wheels. Oh, I'm scared. I really shouldn't be though. I'm making this a lot harder than it has to be. Um, so I'm gonna do that and then stroke path with the brush, simulate pressure. Maybe I shouldn't draw the spokes. Maybe I should draw it like uh, motion lines, you know, like it's whirring and whizzing down the track. There you go. Okay. Put that one there and then make it a little smaller. And I think I'm going to be a cheaty. <laughs> There we go, there's my little, my little train. So let's um, hmm, try and think how I want to do this. I want to make it black under the train, but I don't want it to like touch the wheels because I don't want them to just like absorb into blackness. So let's do it like do this. That looks real nice. I wonder how long that took me. <laughs> Let me think. 
paying attention. Okay, let's go back to 100%. our sketch. Let me just make it all black in there. And let's do the smoke. And the steam. At least I think that's what that is. Alrighty, so as far as I know, trains are just sort of, I should have got that color picture, but I really like that clip art. So um, as far as I know, trains are just kind of dark. <laughs> um, I'm going to make the coal and the smoke. I said that like that guy in The Simpsons, smoke. I'm going to make that the darkest. Um, let's accent the train in red, so let's give it a nice red roof. Um, I just think red looks nice <laughs> with trains. We'll make the Z on the front red too, how about? Nice gold bell. And I can kind of go around this. Try not to get too fancy here since this is gonna, a lot of this detail is just gonna end up lost in the end anyway. Boo boo boo, so sad. Okay, 
Okay, so the base for that is green. Ah, I'm sorry if this one's a little boring. Okay, you know what? We can disable this now. Oh, I'm so nervous to hear what he thinks about these. It's always hard when you, like, really admire someone a lot, but you're also, like, doing stuff for them. Like, it was the same way when I did stuff for Seamus, you know, every single time. I'm like, oh, please let him be okay with this. Especially stuff I was unfamiliar with, like games that weren't out yet, you know. Like, I knew about it as much as everybody else did. Uh, when those games were coming out, so. I was like, oh, please, art gods, let them be okay with this. Because there's nothing worse than having, like, somebody you admire just be like, it's crap. <laughs> I can't honestly say that I've had that experience, maybe, in particular, but. It always sucks when you, like, draw for somebody, and they're just like, oh. Oh man, I've I've drawn for a few people where you could just like oh, they were just so irritated about what they got, you know, or they demanded more of me that I could not give. A long time ago I did a commission for somebody. It was a Pokemon commission for Gaia. If you're out there, dude, I'm sorry I'm talking about you, but <laughs> he, uh, he really didn't like his commission, <laughs> and I loved it. I had worked so hard on it, and I was so proud of it, and when I showed it to him, he was just like, oh, no. <laughs> he was not having it. Yeah, he pretty much all but told me it sucked. <laughs> like, um, I don't know though that it really affected me. Like, I don't know. I've always had kind of thick skin about that stuff. I was just like, oh well, that's your opinion. I love it. <laughs> You know, had he asked me to fix stuff on it or change things, I don't know if I would have. One, it was for Gaia Gold, so it was like, who cares? But I mean, it was sort of like, um, yeah, I think I just would have liked, I think I was so pleased with what I had done that I would have been like, nope. This is why I don't work for the man.
I want to lighten it up a little bit. I think I'm going to put some black on here. Wow, that's what my black looks like with color dodge turned on. Yep. All right. Well, that's what it's going to look like that. I try to not resort to just being like, well, I'm going to add like 15 gallons of black all over this. I love black. I I used to not like it at all. Like, I never wanted to use it in anything. And I don't know, I just, I fell in love with black. Like how it's used to convey shadows and mass. And I don't know, I just love it. But uh, I have to be careful because, yeah, like I said, all I want to do is just have some fun. I got a feeling I'm not the only one. No, I just want to use black on everything. That'll be that. It's a little sloppy, <laughs> I think. Um, especially the spokes here, or not the um, the spokes, but kind of like the the motion lines. I don't know. Probably not the best brush selection for doing this. It's a little. A little roughy. Okay. Um. Oh, I want to do one other thing. I'm going to take Yeasto's head <laughs> and put it on a pike. No, I'm going to make it really, really teeny tiny. And I'm going to put it in the uh, conductor's seat. What I'm trying to say is, I think he should shovel coal now. Um, there we go. Train. Let's go to our list. And I'm going to close these. So I'm just going to close my wraps anyway. And now we've got a cute little train. Woot woot. Alright, so let's do the whole shindig again. 28 by 28. Wow, that's so teeny tiny. Ha, oh, you can barely make out anything. Oh, that's a shame. Well, gosh, I really wanted to be done with this. <laughs> 
I'm gonna be hungry, it's my lunch time. All right, let's try this. Twenty-eight. Whoo, buddy. I tell you what, this is gonna be a rough one to try to make everything pop and like be defined as a train. Please, Lord Zisto, give me your powers, all your art <laughs> If he ever sees this, he's going to be like, I have no art powers. No, it's mean. I actually don't know. I don't know if he draws or anything. don't want to turn lazy to zoom me on because it does tend to lag a little bit it would be very helpful right about now All right, let's try this um, image. I don't know how much better this is honestly going to be, but um, you know what? That's a little better. But I think one way that I can improve it is putting a big, thick, heavy border around it. Oops. At least I think this will help. Of course, we have to collapse it. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll leave the border on and it won't get all wonky when you try to resize it. Uh. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. I mean, maybe I could like... Lighten this a little bit. Yeah, that's a rough one. I'm going to show it to him and just be like, please, it's <laughs> the best I could do. But 
but I think everything else turned out really, really nice. Copy. Save. Then image size 56. Damn, if only it could be that big, it would look great. <laughs> you can actually make out kind of what it is there. Uh, Image size 20. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's a really detailed little, little object, so it's kind of hard to make it. But I don't know. Maybe he'll be satisfied with it and he won't mind how terrible it is. Well, I think I'm going to stop here because I actually just want to check with him real quick about the whole gems and coins idea, but I think that's kind of a cool one because he's a little fifi Skyrimy guy, so. Uh, but uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was pretty fun working on all these, and um, these will probably be going up on my DeviantArt or my Tumblr sometime within the next couple days, if not today. So um, you'll see them then, like if you want to see them all together and complete and everything. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye!